everybody, and welcome back to attempt two of Whitling's prototype, episode number 31, where we decide to select the faces and whether to fade them out or not. <clears throat> I tried a stream just a few moments ago, but it seems like it's connected again. What's happening here? It says there are no dropped frames, so I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, okay. Let's see how it goes. So, today we're going to implement... Which idea? Where did it live? We're going to implement this idea. Relevant cube area. If you remember last time, we talked about... We're going to have sort of a list of filters, I guess we could call them in order to decide which cubes get to stay and which cubes we have to fade out. Um, so I guess first thing we need is a name of a component. <clears throat> I do believe that the cube selector is going to need to talk to this component. And we do have a cube fader, but that's responsible for just fading a single cube. So what would be a good name? Relevant cube filter. How about that? I like that name. And we'll drop this into the core level objects. That definitely seems like something that will stick around from level to level. Apply that. And then in our cube selector, <clears throat> We have this select function, so we'll serialize a field. Relevant cube filter. Whoa. Did I spell relevant wrong? Revelant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> relevant. Hmm? Relevant cube filter. Let's make sure the class matches the class or file name. There we go. And now we should be able to uncomment. Oh, hey now, auto format. So if currently select doesn't equal null, we will deselect that object. Then we'll select the new currently selected. Nope, we just want our cube filter dot select new target. No. Selectable. That's not very great. Select new selectable. Um, <laughs> add new cube. Select new cube. <clears throat> now let's think about what data type we want to pass here, right? I don't know if we really want the selectable. Although everything that's selectable does have a fadeable or a cube fader. So the cube faders are what we are going to want to talk to, but we can find that more easily in the cube filter script. Mm 
So each one of our cubes has a box collider. This is what we're going to use to test and see if we're inside of this relevant cube area. I'm just going to pass a game object <clears throat> for now. Maybe we'll change that. And this is select new cube as a public member function. Game object selected. There we go. So I do believe that we're going to need two lists here. A couple lists, actually. So we're going to start with game objects, but oh no, this should probably be cube fader. So we're going to have a faded cube list a unfaded, a visible cube list, or maybe focused, prioritized cube list. Um, OK. And then we'll have all faders. These should be explicitly marked as private. <clears throat> and then in awake. Oh, I don't know if we can do it in, in awake. Because our cube manager spawns cubes on start. So doing it in awake. Oh, but this is the awake. Yeah, this is the awake of the relevant cube filter. We can't put it in here. Find all faders. Find objects of type cube fader. Oof, and this is a hard list. Um, that two array. Maybe we can pass this array to a new list. There we go, that makes it happy. So let's print out all faders dot count. So we need to find the right time to call this, and I do believe the right time is in the cube manager after we've we find neighbors. Do we even need to do that anymore? I don't even know if we're using neighbors. Let's try commenting this out. Let's just see. Let's see what you do, Unity. No explosions. Oh, OK. Yeah, OK. Does appear that we need that. So <clears throat> what is the next step? The next step is for the cube manager to send a message to the relevant cube filter. And so once we're done spawning everything, cube filter dot find all faders. Next, we link that up and submit the prefab.
cube filter goes here. And then cube manager also needs to know about the filter and we can apply. I think we should get 15. 14. Let's get rid of this print here. Things are happier now. Fourteen, really? Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, <laughs> <clears throat> math. In my brain, I still had these extra three cubes from the last episode or two hanging out there. So my counting was poor. Um, I also don't want these end cubes. I never want to fade out the end cubes. Those should always stay. So let's add that logic. Oh, do to do to do, do fader index. And I'm going to leave this empty. I'll say if this is going to be a nice one. All faders at fader index get component cube core. Start end is so we have this bool is start end. Let's add an accessor. That's not where I wanted to go. And if it is, we'll remove at fader index. If it's not a start end, then we can inc increment the fader index. <clears throat> and this is important because what we need to do is loop through the array and I guess I could draw this. This is a very easy mistake to make, and it's kind of hard to track down. So it's good to talk about. So we have our counter, which is our index. I'm going to call this i. And we've got a few cubes in here. And we've got a start cube and an end cube here. So if we always increment i at the end of this loop, we're going to miss this end cube. Right, because i is going to equal 1, and then we're going to remove this item. And remember, removing an item from an array is going, or a list, is going to shrink it down. So now e <clears throat> is actually at index 1, but as the loop progresses, i is going to go to 2, and now we're checking this one here. So this bug would only happen if your start and end cube ended up next to each other in that list. Very tricky to find. Maybe it would happen one out of a hundred levels, and you'd be like, why is my end cube fading out? <clears throat> but you'd know that this is one of the main points of focus for that logic, so you might be able to track it down very easily. So now let's print all faders dot count and see what happens. No thunderbutt. I should get twelve. Thirteen. Oh no. <laughs> Is start end. Oh, 
well, that makes sense. This one was not marked. There we go. Okay, so I am content with that. The next thing we need to do is we have this select new cube. Well, let's make sure we've got our lists memory allocated. There we go. And let's see. So we've got our cube faders. <clears throat> now we just want our first fade to work. So first order of business, get a single fade. So that means we need that. We, that means we need to. Um, it's so hard to think with a cat in your face. We need to calculate all of the cube cubes that are within within relevant collider. So before we calculate that, we need to build the relevant collider. And unfortunately, our engine that we're working inside of does not allow us just to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to make a new box collider. Oh, really? I thought we could only add component. Huh. Maybe they changed that. Hmm. I was under the impression we couldn't do this. But you know what? Life is just going to be easier if we have a separate game object. And I'm going to make that game object a child of the relevant cube filter because this transform is zero, its parents transform is zero. Let's call this relevant cube lighter. And this will be a box collider. Its size will be three. So you can see here that we're picking a Rubik's Cube size chunk of the world. And that's going to be our first filter. Everything around where our selected cube lives. So let's apply our core level objects and let's get a reference to this collider in our script. This is a box collider, relevant collider. There we go, boom, and apply. So our relevant collider needs to be positioned in the right place. And we'll say relevant collider transform position equals selected transform position. <clears throat> and I do believe this is going to fail, but I'd like to demonstrate it again just in case. It's that when Unity does collision bounds intersecting, it uses the local coordinates of the bounds instead of the position of the game object that owns the bounds. Huh, who made that decision? There 
And I don't know if we really fader index. Mm, yeah, this should be fine. Sorry, she's uh, she's tearing up things in my bed. Just wanted to make sure she's not got my headphones. Let's see. So we're looping through all of our cubes, all of our faders. And we want to see if a relevant collider dot bounds dot intersects. Hey, come on, lady. All faders at fader index dot get component box collider. This is a lot of get components. I might want to store these box colliders for later. That seems like a good idea. Um, let's mm, 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 mm. to do store box colliders. <laughs> Usually when I do program and I'm not streaming, I let her sit there. Unless I'm in the zone or something. Or if she starts biting me. So let's see, store box colliders in some container. So we're getting the box collider component, we're retrieving the bounds. And then that is our condition. And if this happens, then we want to push onto our prioritized cube list. All faders at fader index. And once we're down here, let's print out Prioritize cube list count faders prioritized. Select new cube, that should be all linked up. So if I click on this one, we should get six. Twelve. Okay. Really, 12? That's everything. <clears throat> yep, okay, I thought so. So let's try pulling our bounds into two separate objects. Maybe this is some new kind of typing. It's like Zen yoga typing where you must work around the cat. Be the cat. Let the cat affect how you've perfected typing over the last decade. Let her change it so you can explore new and exciting ways of typing. Boom, there we go. So, relevant bounds, center and extents. That's it. Center is one. Oh, here the center is two, one. That looks correct. Cool.
Center is one. Center is three, two. Ha ha! Okay. So that's interesting. It seems to be working on top level objects, but not child objects. But we should get some failures in here. All of these are colliding. Really? So, something at 3, 0, 1. Okay, so that's totally wrong. The max extents on this relevant bounds is 2.5. Oh, but this is 3. Oh, man. Okay, that was my problem. Let's go to the drawing board. That's really funny, actually. So the code was working, but the problem with Unity extents is that if they are abutting, it thinks that they are overlapping. So if I have a cube of a rectangle, not a rectangle, a collider that is right up next to this, it's going to think, oh, you are overlapping this just a little bit. So this is totally within the collider. So is this one. So what we can do, the only way for it to be out of is be all the way over here. That's not what we want. We just want things that are kind of in here. So what we can do is let's change the size of our relevant cube collider. Let's do a 2.5, whoa, 2.5. So you can see that it's still colliding but it's not going past the, let's select both of those. Yeah, you can see it's actually not going above where this cube is. So we're still getting like a nine by nine Rubik's cube selection. However, we don't have to worry that, so this should be six, nice. This one should be nine. Oh, <laughs> definitely got a clear prioritized cube list, right? Seems like a good idea. So we got nine. Um, this should be six as well. This should be four, four, uh, what would this be, nine? No, that was six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's cool. We have, we know which six are being selected now. And I'm just gonna fade everything else out. Let's see how that looks. By the way, that means we're also gonna need a fade in function. Probably gonna use a new ease transform ease for that as well. So let's see. I could do an else here. Faded cube list dot add. And we could maybe even tell it to fade out right now. 
Why do we need this faded cube list? Yeah, maybe we don't. No, we do need this. So we don't fade in things that are already faded. Mm, this is a little bit tricky. We've got a couple different states to take care of. But one thing at a time, let's just fade all of them out. Our cube fader doesn't have a public fade. That makes sense. And let's call this begin fade out. There we go. And we will call it cool. Let's turn off these three auto faders. One second is a long time. All of you should have this fade ease, and all of you should have point three. Oh, what is that that's happening there? Oh, that's interesting. We're telling them to fade out, and so they're beginning the transition again and going from fully visible to... invisible. Hmm. You look majestic, Thunderbutt. Oh, nice. What's your new? If you ever get on a coin, that's what that's what you're gonna look like. Majestic. Thought. So let's see. We can get rid of this faders prioritized. <clears throat> let's go to the drawing board. So we have, I still like this idea. We have So when the user clicks, we want to fade in. relevant cubes that are faded out <clears throat> and we want to fade out cubes that are no longer relevant Hmm. OK. 
kind of tempted to use a dictionary for quick quick retrieval. Maybe we could have like a cube ID and a fader. So I don't want to have to loop through this list every time looking for a cube that's in there. Fade in cubes that are faded out. Relevant cube. So this means we need to know which cubes were faded last frame. And this we means we need to know relevant last frame. So we do have two lists for that. They're not quite named correctly. And maybe all cubes start as relevant. Because we want to be able to see everything on the board. And I think if we get this set up working correctly, then we can just add a whole bunch of filtering functions it might be good to have two lists or maybe four dictionaries that's a lot but there's only one cube filter hmm Let's get let's not get too crazy with it. Let's just get Well, we need the fade in, don't we? Oh. Just making sure we're not dropping any frames. So, let's go to the cube fader. Let's rename this. Fade out ease. Fade in ease. See, it's so interesting because what's really going to happen is both of these, we're just going to have different curves going on here. The timing might be different too, so we'll keep it in separate things, but both of these, both of this logic is correct. So... Let's extract these into their own private functions. And this would be update ease takes in a float curve output and ease float output final. I don't really need to turn those off anymore. So this is end. Oh, that's right. Oh, hey. Um, hmm. We might need different 
We might need different functions for end ease because it's using two different curves. Yeah, okay. Uh, we could have a current ease. Uh, that seems bug ridden. I'm just going to make two different functions. I'm not too sad about that. So here we can just say plus equals update ease. This. Oh geez, did I call this the same thing? End ease out. Okay, fade in ease on end ease. End ease in. <laughs> Let's not forget to update our fade in ease. So fade out, that goes high for a long time to low for a short time. Point 0.3, fade in, low for a short time, high for longer. Actually, I like this better. Point 0.3. Okay, so we've got our cube fader. Let's make our other public function. Can fade in, fade in ease, can ease. There we go. So now we just need to decide when to call these. Our begin fade outs are looking fine. Ooh, and you know what? Ooh, this is good. Let's just put some logic in here. Yeah. So we've got faded in, fading in, faded out, and fading out. So those are our four states that we can have inside of this fader. Uh, we'll call it current state. So begin fade out. Current state is state dot fading out. Begin fade in. Fading in. And we'll put this if current state does not equal faded in. So if it's not already faded in, then start doing that. There we go. Oh! <laughs> my keystrokes out of order there. And I am glad that I separated these into two separate functions because when we're done, I can say current state is equal to state dot faded out. And same here.
Okay. Boom. I don't know. That was a lot of code, but it makes me feel pretty confident. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is pretty darn cool. We still don't have anything to do with selection. We still have no idea what to do about... Oh. About this here. Oh? Oh, really? Uh-oh. I think we had a bug. Yep. If we select quickly... Hmm. Yeah, there's a bug hiding out in here somewhere. Oh, is this guy, like, always off now? No? But, I mean, it looks really cool because the camera move speed is, like, synced up with our fade speed. So it's actually like, here's the part of the level that you're interested in. And I can't click on this to move it without actually hiding everything. I don't know. I'm kind of happy with this. At least for now. Not being able to rotate by 45 degrees might be a problem. Oh, but you know what? <gasps> With our code, I do believe. <clears throat> With our code, I do believe we could implement some kind of input command to rotate it by 45 degrees. Because we're doing every... Oh, excuse me. We're doing everything with transforms. Everything which just rotates in local space. Why not? Why not give them... 45 degree rotation... Ooh, let's test it. How can we test this really easily? Camera offset transform. One eighty, okay. Q rotation direction transform. I think we could leave it like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, I mean, that looks pretty cool.
okay, well, something is very wrong in the state of Denmark. But at least now we know set next was given a path node that has no tag. Oh, yeah, I'm sure our collisions are overlapping in awful ways right now. <laughs> Quickly, quickly, let's revert back. Whoa! Oh, geez. Okay, so it's angry because I hit revert, which means it removed my start node. Cube manager start node, and then our cube rotator, our cube controller wants the particle system. Okay. Oh, hey, oh, oh, Jesus. It's all broken now. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> Cube Collider, 2.5s all the way around. Cube Filter knows about the Collider. He's got my faders still have the right data. Let's get rid of this print here. We know the mesh renderer finding is happy. What happened? No. Well, I think that's it for today. We're one step closer. You know, it's not anywhere near done, but we can fly around our level pretty easily. <coughs> we know what cubes are around, the focused cube. And so I'm fairly happy with what we got done today. Uh, thank you everybody for joining. Next time we're probably going to work on our filters a little bit more. So I will see you tomorrow.